my dear friends, I welcome you all to my daily dose. So, I am myself Dr. Rajesh Duba, I am a cardiologist and I am also the mentor for teaching general medicine for exams like NEET PG, AIMS, PGA and as well as GPA. So, as the part of today's daily dose, the question is, negative myoclonus is seen in hepatic encephalopathy, various CJD, that is Creutzfeldt Jacob disease, Jan syndrome, Salam seizures. See, first of all, you should know what is negative myoclonus. Negative myoclonus is nothing but asterixis or it is given by another terminology which is nothing but flapping tremors. So, asterixis or flapping tremors is nothing but is the terminology given for the negative myoclonus. And now where do you see this particular negative myoclonus that is seen in patients with the hepatic encephalopathy? Now I will discuss in this short video about what is myoclonus, what are the types of myoclonus. If you take this myoclonus, it is a rapid shock-like jerky movements consisting of single or repetitive muscle discharges is what is called as myoclonus. Now, if you take this myoclonus, we have various types of myoclonus. One among that is your action myoclonus. Action myoclonus, the word itself tells you, that is the one will, which occurs with voluntary movement is what is called as action myoclonus. And the other types of myoclonus are the reflex or startle myoclonus. The word reflex itself tells you that it is the myoclonus which occurs with external stimulus like loud noise is what is called as reflex or startle myoclonus. The other variety like what we have is the hypnagogic jerks. This is the one which occurs in normal people on going to sleep in NREM. So this is a normal variant. So we might have come across in many scenarios that the individual is having or the individual complains that I am having a jerky movements during sleep. It is not during sleep. When the individual is about to go into the NREM sleep, he will have the jerky movements and they are normal. And that is what is called as your hypnagogic jerks. Now, you take your negative myoclonus. This is what is our question. The other terms of your negative myoclonus is asterixis or flapping tremors. And what are the conditions you will have this? You will have this in patients with a hepatic encephalopathy. So in patients with a hepatic encephalopathy, there will be increase in your ammonia levels. And this ammonia will go and get deposited within the brain, particularly within the basal ganglia. And that makes the individual to land up in hepatic encephalopathy. Next. The other condition where you will have this negative myoclonus is in patients with a respiratory failure. Particularly the type 2 respiratory failure where there is increase in your carbon dioxide. And the other condition where you can have this is in patients with a uremic encephalopathy. So these are the clinical condition where you can have this negative myoclonus. And as a part of today's daily dose, one more clinical question is, which of the following is associated with mesial temporal lobe sclerosis? History of febrile seizures, hypothyroidism, neurofibromatosis, recurring oral after salceration. Now, if you take this answer here, it is your history of febrile seizures is the one which is associated with the mesial temporal lobe sclerosis. Let me discuss about this. Your mesial temporal lobe sclerosis is the disorder which is characterized by refractory seizures in the sense these individuals they don't respond to the medical management what does they require they require vagal nerve stimulation as the part of the treatment and if you take uh, the definitive treatment it is your amygdalo hippocampectomy is the definitive treatment for your mesial temporal lobe sclerosis and these individuals they have a very low seizure threshold Right, And if the children, if they have fever, they can develop the seizures. So the point is that these patients with the mesial temporal sclerosis, they have the history of febrile seizures since childhood. This is a very important point. And because the sclerosis is in the temporal lobe, these individuals, they will have the focal seizures. 
right? These individuals, they will have focal seizures. And along with the focal seizures, they will also have discognitive features which are present in the adult age group. So that's a very important point you need to take into consideration in the mesial temporal lobe sclerosis in adult age group. Next. So in these patients, they will also have aura. Aura is common with behavioral arrest like staring. And they will also have complex automatism with postictal disorientation. That is another important point related to your mesial temporal sclerosis. And what is the diagnosis or how do you do diagnosis is by MRI. MRI will show the hippocampal sclerosis. And what are the findings in MRI? That they'll have hippocampal atrophy, which is nothing but reduced hippocampal volume. There will be increased T2 signal. And there will be also abnormal morphology that you will notice in the MRI. And what is that abnormal morphology? That is loss of internal architecture. That is interdigitations of the hippocampus are become abnormal. So this is what is the MRI finding in patients with a mesial temporal sclerosis. So this is a very short video on negative myoclonus and as well as mesial temporal sclerosis. I hope you might have liked this particular short video. So please follow us on the daily dose for the daily updates. Thank you very much.